to judge you. So we need to take care of our presence. And, and the presently, I'm supposed to preach. So here we go. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 41. And Elisha said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Oh, hallelujah. It's beginning to rain, 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 rain. Brother, it's beginning to rain. Whoa, the voice of the Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. There is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'll pause there a little bit. I'm so glad that you came up. When it was announced, the cap meeting wasn't going to be about getting up. Hallelujah. Some of you must have thought you need to get up. Hallelujah. So you got up and come to camp meeting. Hallelujah. And now that you're camp at camp meeting, what we all need to do is get up. Hallelujah. We come to a giddy up camp meeting, so it's time to ride this Holy Ghost horse with a giddy up and let her in. Hallelujah. Let her go tonight. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Giddy up, Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. My, oh, my. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now. Now be careful with these, or these words we're saying now. Go up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Uh -huh. I'll let you in on something here. Part of what we want to look at tonight is what John calls us to understand in Revelation and Isaiah spoke about. A sea of humanity. A sea. All of you sitting out there are a sea. The scripture compares you to a sea. So Elijah sent his servant out to look over the sea. To see if there was any look of rain. To see if it had started clouding up or any evidence that it was going to rain. And he looked over the sea. He looked them all over. He come back and reported to Elijah. There's nothing. I know there's the instance in history we're reading about here where the Holy Ghost is dealing this to me that it's not history we're talking about the present right now hallelujah as this servant begins to look out you see I serve one greater than I just as Elijah's servant was there hallelujah praise God as an evangelist I look out for revival I look out for the rain to come down hallelujah I'm God's water boy Woo! glory Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll carry water for God anytime, anywhere, any place. Hallelujah. When you see, when you hear them talking about that, people are so crazy that charge hell with a bucket of water. I'm with them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give me my bucket of Holy Ghost water. Oh, there's going to be a shower. Oh, hallelujah. The flames of hell in people's lives. Hallelujah. Looking over the sea. And nothing. Hallelujah. Now you may have a different view than I have. That's why we have four gospels, you know. Matthew had a view. Mark had a view. Luke had a view. And John had a view. I thank for every one of their views. And I'm thankful for all the views of the ministry that I hear. And have heard and will continue to hear. Thank God. Hallelujah. They bring re renewed perspective and understanding in my spiritual life that I need. Hallelujah. So if I present something to you that you haven't seen, well, you've got a view that I haven't seen. So just take a look through these eyes. Hallelujah. And realize 
When I looked out, when I was in this congregation, I was one of that sea. And when this opened up, hallelujah. Brother Jim's very wonderful, loving, polite, kind, concerned child of God. Man, every word. Don't expect it to happen again. But he, he, when he was up here and the first service opened, he was looking out. He was that servant today, looking for revival on that day this conference broke out. He was looking at the sea. And as he looked, I believe, to me, in my perspective, when I looked, there wasn't nothing. Thank God some folks showed up. Hallelujah. Get points for showing. Hallelujah. But we come for more than just to show up. Hallelujah. We come for a heart change. We come for deliverance. We come for the glory of God to change our lives, to send us home new on fire, stirred up, that we would take the fire of God wherever. More, this is camp meeting. It's not church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day we'll get to the place that we won't tell the difference between camp meeting or church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Nothing. Hallelujah. That's what this servant seen. And life said, go back. Look again. When he got down to pray. I don't know if Brother Jim knows it, but he mumbles. <laughs> oh, no. Tell him I'm your brother. <laughs> Praise God. He was standing up here before y'all talking about the Lord, mumbling a prayer to God. Lord, turn him loose. God, set him free. God, pour out. God, send the rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he each event begin to take place in the service. Things begin to loosen up. Hallelujah. We felt a few drops of rain. Hallelujah. Prayer continues to be made even now. People are praying. If nothing else, they're praying for that preacher to shut up so we can get to the food. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. So let me get through this. So we went back seven times. 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. One hand, one cloud coming up out of the sea. You remember I said you were the sea? Hallelujah. He's got all the pastors, all the ministry that's sitting here today. Hallelujah. When you're up there on the platform looking out, how many times are we looking, been looking for just that one hand to come up out of the sea? Hallelujah. For that one hand to raise up with a praise to God. Oh, hallelujah. It brings some hope to your heart. Hallelujah. That you have not missed the presence of God and the word of God. That you're in the right place because there's one cloudy hand going up in the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. And Elijah got determined when he seen that one cloud. He said, this is it. Oh, hallelujah. That's all I need is just one hand. Woo. Glory. I can preach all night. Just one hand go up. Oh, hallelujah. You know, and I have noticed the one hand that goes up first and most often is the one that's least able to raise their hand. Well, now, I might have missed you, but I constantly see Sister Rachel's hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, the last few pains that I've received in this old aging body has been in this right arm. Hallelujah. 
when I begin to praise God, this old right arm is the first one that goes up. You old thing, you need to keep praising God and magnify his name. Oh, hallelujah. Don't tell me about pain. You need to be thinking about the fires of hell, you old flesh. Hallelujah. Let's get separated from the flesh and exalt the presence of God. Let's get that cloud of God going in the midst of us. Oh, hallelujah. But even as that cloud goes up, that one hand goes up and it inspired Elijah and it needs to inspire us, at least one person is getting the message. What I don't have for that one soul. <laughs> hallelujah. That got the message. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. But Elijah was expecting a lot more clouds. Because he was expecting a rainstorm. That was going to come so hard that they weren't even going to be able to travel the roads. Oh, hallelujah. When Elijah got, when Ahab got in his fine kingly chariot with those wonder horses of his and he shook those reins and those horses jerked and began to pull them away to Jezreel, 25 miles from the mountain, running those horses to Jezreel because it was coming to drive and rain. Oh, hallelujah. In the midst of that rain. And those horses beating it down the road, trying to get out of the flood that was coming on the cause of that rain. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Ahab began to wipe his brow and look off to the side. And here comes this ghostly looking old man with, with his tunic cup up, uh, stuffed into his, his belt. Hallelujah. And here he goes, running. Oh, hallelujah. Running out, running those fine steeds that the king was driving. Running 25 miles to Jezreel. Why? Because it's raining. Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Oh, hallelujah. The ground that was parched is parched no more. The desires of needs of man have been met. By the reign of God. Hallelujah. 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 Would you understand what we need then? Is that hand that goes up in surrender? As the fine Pastor Holmes already mentioned along with a hand that goes up in praise to a God that will receive a surrendered heart. But one hand, one cloud, it's not much of a rain. But Elijah was expecting another hand to rise up out of the sea. Oh, hallelujah. And another hand to rise up out of the sea. Hallelujah. I thank God I seen that tonight as people begin to stand up in the presence of God and hands begin to go up. Hallelujah. There was a different feeling in this place, wasn't there? Hallelujah. When people were worshiping God, when people were giving themselves to the praise of God, exalting Him and surrendering themselves, there was a presence that moved into this place. Hallelujah. So much that our leader tonight didn't want to get away from that. Who wants to get away from the presence of God? Hallelujah. Don't ever ask me how long I pray. Most of the time it's not too long. But when God shows up, I don't know. I'll stay until he wants to leave. Hallelujah. How long is service going to be tonight? When God leaves, I'll leave. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to quit preaching. It's all right. Hallelujah. But if God's still moving, I don't want to go nowhere. Y'all go eat. You enjoy yourself. Have fellowship. Go home. I've been on altars before because the presence of God hasn't lifted. And some folks has missed it. The mighty outpouring of God. Hallelujah. During camp, during tent meetings, I, my wife and I had gone, gone into bed totally exhausted with what God had been doing. Only to wake up two hours later, hear somebody shout. Praises under the tent at 2 o'clock in the morning. And somebody else had given their heart to God. And they were baptizing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
We serve a God that works 24-7. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I gleaned some wisdom from one of my first pastors years ago when I was yet in my early 20s. I seen this mean-looking lady come running up to him. She was mean-looking because she had anger all in her face. I was standing next to the pastor. I was learning things from him. One of my mentors, and I, I was standing beside him, and I seen her coming. I kind of moved back and behind a little bit. Hallelujah. Boy, he's got, he's a pastor, you know. I'm fixing to see something now. Oh, hallelujah. She got up next to him. He was a tall dude. This little lady was about like that. Oh, hallelujah. But she was full of fire. It wasn't no good fire. She was full of it. Oh, she looked at him and she said, Who do you think you're the boss? Why do you think you're the boss? Then she said, Who's your boss? I thought, Oh boy, now he's going to let her have it. Oh, he's going to tell her about God, the Holy Ghost, and give her a whole bunch and a bunch of scripture going to be pouring out. Oh, hallelujah. I was ready to make, begin to make mental notes in the midst of that blast that he was receiving from that little lady tormented by trouble in her life, asking him, who's your boss? And he did that soft reply, turn it away right now. He said, you are. He began to give her dates and times. I was in bed with my wife. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. The phone rang. And you asked me to come. And I came. I was out enjoying some pleasure with my children in the afternoon. And you dropped by screaming your problems over my yard. And I had to stop being with my children and go with you and minister. And oh, he just went on until the woman just tucked her tail in and went off. My, oh my, I, I certainly learned something. I'll tell you. I thought I was going to learn how to quote some just the right scripture. Hallelujah. But what I was learning was to get the right attitude. Hallelujah. Get that surrender to God. Hallelujah. To realize I was walking in the, in the presence of one of God's chosen servants. Hallelujah. I was blessed to be there and experience a servant's heart. Hallelujah. As he certainly was working for Christ. Hallelujah. But she was calling the shots. Hallelujah. He would go. I thank God. Where we're going at tonight, folks, is that we need to begin surrendering our lives to God 24-7. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. You know, so many times Americans are good at wanting one thing, to be number one. Huh? Yeah. We want to be number one. That can be our problem or it can be our salvation. If we want to be number one in recognition, in honor, privileges, empowerment, monetarily, and all those other things, we got problems. But if we want to be number one in service to our God, if we want to be the first one in the sea of the congregation that raises that cloudy hand of God that promises rain, oh, hallelujah, you want to be number one. Oh, hallelujah. Do you want to start the reign of God? All it takes is a cloud going up out of the sea. Oh, hallelujah. And then another cloud to join it. And another cloud and another cloud and another cloud all over the sea. Then the sea is just covered with the rain clouds of God that begins to go on over the parched land and begins to water the earth. 
the people that need that refreshing of God. Yeah. All because of one little man's hand. A cloud the size of a hand, man's hand coming up out of the sea. Hallelujah. Lord, make me number one. The first one to praise. The first one to the altar. The first one in service. The first one to glorify your name. The first one in testimonies. The first one to witness to my neighbors. The first one to be a light to my family. The first one on whatever God has called me to be. Let me be the first one to go. When God says, who will I send? Let me be the first voice that hollers, Here I am, Lord! Send me! Send me! Send me! Hallelujah. Praise God. You, My fellow evangelists, you stand up with me tonight. Well, I won't treat you too bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Here I am, Lord. Send me. 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 Hallelujah. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Hallelujah. My fellow, my pastor, stand up. Used to be fellow pastors for 28 years. My pastors, please stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise those clouds. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Send revival. Here I am, Lord. Send revival. Here I am, Lord. Send revival. Oh, here I am, Lord. Send revival. Let my church be the first to touch God. Let mine be the first to bring the fire in my community. Let my church be the first to be an example of children living a life for God. Let my church be the first. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me to be the first in my community. Oh, hallelujah. Congregation, anybody here want to surrender to God? Stand up and raise those hands if you're ready for God to send you. Oh, ready for God to send you. Oh, hallelujah. Ready for God to send you. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Allison. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When Isaiah called out those words, he didn't know where he was going. When Abraham left his homeland, because God said go, he didn't know where he was going. There was no itinerary. You don't know where you're going tonight except closer to Jesus. But as you raise those hands and surrender, here I am, Lord. Send me. Don't let me sit in this place and die. Oh, even the lepers knew they didn't want to sit in that place and die. Just dry up and die. They said, let's go out. Let's just go out and see what we can find. Let's just go out. Let's get up off of our place of rest and go out. Because if we stay here, we'll die. But if we go out, we may die. But what if? If the church stays in this same condition, we'll die. We'll die because we're made to grow and glow the presence of God. If we stay in this backward condition, we'll die. What's going to happen if we go out? We may just die. Or we may find greater life and the power of God like the lepers found. All that they had need of if because they just got up and they went out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's most of you that stood tonight with those hands up. You stood up and raised your hands, not because I asked you, because there was a heart of surrender in you tonight. 
Hallelujah. That was saying, God, I'm tired of this same old stuff in my heart. I'm tired of the same old back crawling in my life. Lord, I want to be a shining example. 